Amen. Isn't it great that we can remind ourselves that no matter what happens in our life, God has it covered. You know, God is in control. And so we praise the Lord for that. If you have your Bibles close at hand, Acts chapter number 9 is where we're going to be at. I thought last week that we will be in chapter 10, but as I went through chapter the end of chapter 9, I thought, okay, we need to spend some time uh, talking about this portion of Scripture before um, chapter 10. And so, Acts chapter number 9, we're going to start in verse number 32. We'll go through the end of that chapter. So let's go ahead and pray, though, before our, um, we get to our Bible study. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to be with each other, to rejoice with each other, to understand your word a little better. And Father, may you bring to mind the questions and the the thoughts about this passage that we need to be thinking about and to rejoice in, but and also to be uh, reproved by. And Father, we ask you to help us, to guide us in our discussion. Uh, may you, through your Spirit, give us uh, eyes that can see, ears that can hear. And Father, we ask you to help touch our hearts and minds with what you have for us tonight. I do pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Last week, just to get us going with uh, reminding ourselves what, where we have been, so we're in the midst of talking about Peter. Peter being Simon Peter, the uh, disciple uh, that specifically is the one that God's using specifically uh, throughout the beginning portions of the book of Acts. Now, he's using all the disciples, but specifically, Peter is doing specific things. Um, in Acts chapter number 8, we saw that he went to um, that of Samaria because Philip went and he preached and many Samaritans got saved. And so Peter and John came, laid their hands on the individuals there that got saved and they received the Holy Spirit. Now we talked about that that is uh, not for today, but uh, that's something that happened in the early church. Uh, this is a transitional book, um, so the things that are done here, not necessarily what is done for us today. Uh, so that's uh, just to make sure that there's no confusion about that. Then they had this interesting conversation with Simon the sorcerer, and so he wanted to buy the gift, uh, the ability to give out the Holy Spirit with uh, money, and Peter says, may your money perish with you, and so uh, so he needed to repent of uh, his wickedness. And so, and so we see now in Acts chapter number 9, some things have happened that will dramatically change uh, church history. In fact, in Acts chapter number 9, we have the conversion of Saul of Tarsus. He was going to Damascus, and on his way there, uh, we, those who are familiar with the story, we know that he was blinded by the fact that Jesus himself was talking to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom thou persecuteth. And so he is then changed from that point uh, to become the apostle that we know today. Um, but after that, it's a, I thought, okay, well, right off the bat, we're going to talk about Paul. Well, no, we're talking about Peter once again. So Peter, we see from Acts chapter 9, 10, 11, and 12, and then after that point, we don't see Peter ever again in the book of Acts. We're talking about specifically now Paul's uh, mission to the Gentiles. And so here we're going to look at this portion of Scripture, and, uh, and we'll, we'll see what the, the Lord has for us for our Bible study. Verse number 32, so I'll start us off just to remind us of, of what, I, what we do as a Bible study is that we talk through the text. I, I read a portion and then I ask questions and then to get our input and our thoughts flowing. Um, verse number 32 is where we'll start tonight. And it says, And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwell at Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, uh, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. Now, here's a question for you. What in the world is palsy? What happens when a person has palsy in the Bible? 
Okay, so yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. The original gives us a little more understanding in that the Greek word that's actually used is where we get the word um, paralytic or paralyzed. And so this person, whoever he is, for eight years, he is paralyzed. He is, it says, which kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. So it's some sort of disease that we see throughout Scripture that if a person has it, he's not having the ability to get up. He has not the ability to walk. He does not have the ability uh, to even get out of his bed. Now, let me ask you this question. If this was, was you, if this were you, there you go, um, what would you uh, miss the most about not being able to get up? Not being able to run and play like you used to. Yeah, that's true. Any other things? Yes, Genevieve. Right, so freedom. There's a lot of freedom if you have the ability to, uh, you know, be able to walk, and this person does not. Yeah, all right, anything else? Right, right, so he is on his bed he can't do anything for himself really in order to change his location at all all right any other thoughts yes Aaron. getting up to use the restroom yeah that's true that's something that we take for granted at times you know just thinking about this poor guy what else what else would be something that you're not able to do that you would that you know you can do right now yes wanda spend time with friends right going places and going to church going you know Right, right. So people would have to come to you instead of you going to them. So it doesn't happen by experience. True, true. All right, any other, any other person? I think I saw another hand. Yes, Norman. You can't leave if you don't like the situation you're in. That's true. That's true. It's, yes, Ezekiel. You can't get up. That, yeah, that's true. That's true. Just think about your day today. And the ability to to be able to get up from where you were laying down, you know, I, I you know, all of us had the ability because, well, let's face it, we're here, uh, we're here at church. Um, so I'm just thinking about all the things that I did today. I got up at uh, five twenty one or something to that effect. Uh, I was able to get up, no problem. Get ready, go. I was able to do some things around here at church. Um, I was able to walk or to drive. Think about driving. You're not going to be able to do that if you can't get up. Uh, I was able to visit with somebody uh, today, which was great. Um, um, and he had stairs, and so I wouldn't be able to get up the stairs or get out of the car. Uh, get, getting back home, I wouldn't be able to fiddle around with my door lock uh, <laughs> if I was staying in bed, which that might have been okay. You know, that you know, that would have been interesting. Um, but yeah, and then just being here tonight. Yes, Wanda. True. Very true. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, James. So yeah, you were hit by a car when you were riding your bike and you were in a body cast for a year. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. All right. Any other thoughts? Yeah, just an amazing thing to think about. Is there any, let me ask this, what example in scripture or do we have about a person that uh, was sick of the palsy, what wasn't able to get up? Is there one that comes to mind? Yes, Genevieve. Okay, okay, so we have, so we have the guy. So there's two, two instances you're talking about. So there's one that the guy is needing to get into the, the pool when it gets stirred up by an angel, and so, but somebody beats him before every single time, which we see in John chapter 5. And then we talk about the man that had four, four friends that uh, couldn't get to him by because it was so busy at the house where Jesus was that they got on top of the roof, you know, started uh, doing a little de demolition, got him down, and then Jesus was able to he heal him. Which I kind of uh, I kind of wonder about that is okay. So he he heals him, he gets up and walks. But if it the house is so packed, how did he get out? You know, they you know make a way like a Red Sea or something. But it's just an interesting thought. Anyway, so to to think about. But yeah, this person, Aeneas, it's interesting that um, in this por portion of Scripture, we see three specific individuals um, that will help Peter get ready for the next chapter. Now, I'll tell, say why that is. In verse number three, you see, we, we see this guy's name is Aeneas, which this is 
a Greek name. This is not a Jewish name whatsoever. This is Greek and actually has an understanding of, uh, his name actually means to worship or worthy of worship. And so he was kept in his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. Now notice with me verse number 34. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole, arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. I had a chuckle when I read this and was studying this out. I'm like, well, this is what Peter wants this guy to do. He says, get up and make your bed. So, yeah, so kids, you know, if you know, your parents say make your bed, you've got to make your bed. Um, <laughs> anyway, just an interesting thought. So what would you do if you had suddenly the ability to walk when you could not for eight years? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <it's> true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So he, he got up, but it didn't say he made his bed. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I could do that later. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? What would you do if you were suddenly able to get up after you've been in bed for eight years? Take a shower. Yeah. Ezekiel? Praise the Lord, yeah. Be like that guy that uh, Peter and John uh, healed, and he's leaping and, and praising the Lord because he was lame for all those years. Yes, Jason, go to church. That's right. That's a good place to go. Amen. All right, anybody else? Well, that's great. Oh, sure. It'll be kind of hard to do so if you're in a body cast. So <laughs> True, very true. But praise the Lord that you were able to, to walk again. So, you know, yeah, amen. Any other thoughts? What would you do if you had the, suddenly the ability to get up? If you've been in bed for eight years, you learn how to walk again. It's kind of an interesting thing. Did these people have to learn how to walk or did they actually know already, you know, given the information with the miracle? So perhaps it's a miracle within a miracle. So, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and move on with our text. Verse number 35 now. And all that dwelt at Lydda, or Lydda, uh, and Sauron uh, saw him and turned to the Lord. So every single time we see in the text that Peter does something miraculous, people in the vicinity of the miracle, they turn to the Lord. Just about every single time. So the, the miracle is to show what power Christ has and the fact that he's able to do this. Uh, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Everybody's now turning to the Lord in that region. And now, verse number 36, Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. I know that is a name that... Uh, uh, people would like to name their uh, daughter there, Dorcas. That's kind of a weird name. Uh, it's interesting, both names mean gazelle. And I don't know if she's you know, a very excited person, I guess. Uh, so, verse, verse number 36. This woman was full of good works, alms deeds, which he did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom they, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber, and for as much as Lida was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard, had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he should uh, would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them, and when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive." All right, so what is the big deal about this por portion right here with this, this woman, uh, which, interesting, it never actually tells you um, how old sh this person is. We assume she's old, but it doesn't actually say that. It's very interesting. Uh, the widows are crying about uh, her, and so 
But what's the big deal about this portion right here? That Tamitha arose. Yes, Demo. Okay, so she was brought back to life. Yep, yep, that's true. All right, any other thoughts? Right, so they had the same spirit as Christ because Christ did likewise the same, uh, same uh, miracles that, uh, that happened. Yeah. All right, anybody else? Any other thoughts? It's kind of an interesting thing. Right, I'm not sure about that, uh, actually, because I'm looking at the text, and it never does say what they actually want him to do. It, it, they, they went to Peter and came and showed, her, showed him everything, but it never actually does say that they, uh, they asked her, him to raise her back to life. You know, it might be implied, though. Um, but yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing. I'm like, as I'm reading this, I'm like, no, it, it doesn't actually say that. Um, but maybe it's to... You know, with the fact that you could be raised again to life. So, yeah, very true. So they came and said for him not to delay. And so they came and, uh, and yeah, prayed and then had Tabitha raised back to life. Any other thoughts about this miracle? <laughs> if you die, I don't raise you. Well, I do got that AED that uh, that I've been wanting to try on somebody. You know? <laughs> so, no, 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 that, that's not, not what I want. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you came back. Yeah. <laughs> Heaven's for real, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> still, yeah. All right. Any other thoughts? It's kind of an interesting thing uh, to me that this is the the first time since Jesus rose from the dead that somebody else uh, came back to life. Since the resurrection, there's never, not a point that uh, we see the dead rise again until this point. So that's kind of an interesting thing, uh, that, that you know, interesting observation. All right, anybody else? Any, any other observations? That's true, that's true. But what's recorded is the, the first time since Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. All right, Timo? She was a believer. Um, yeah. So a certain disciple named Tabitha. So yeah, she was a believer. Okay, so you're jumping, jumping to my next question. So that's good. So <laughs> if, if she came back to life, and she did, you know, what would she be able to say at this point in time? Yeah. It's like, oh man, why'd you bring me back? <laughs> you know, that might be exactly what you say. It's like I was in a perfect place. Now, now I'm back here. That's that's fantastic. <laughs> yes, Genevieve. It's true. It's true. So, so it'd be an example of what God can do in an individual. And because of that, we actually see in the next verse, um, verse number forty-two, and it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. So once again, you had the miracle, and then you had the realization of, okay, well, Jesus must be alive because of what happened, they said in the name of Christ, for him to be healed, and then uh, he rose this, uh, this lady back to life, and so, yeah, so yeah, many people more, more came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and so because of that, God used her in a very specific way that other people came to know Christ. All right, any other thoughts? Yes, Norton. That's a possibility, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of the weird thought about, okay, so Lazarus and this lady and uh, the widow's son, um, the daughter that died that was raised again. So each one of these um, died, came back to life. So the examples, the fact that we don't have anything that they said well, it could be the very fact that we, we don't need to know what heaven's like because God already said it. Um, so yeah, just, you know, Lazarus did not get the, the book deal <laughs> when he came back to, to life. You know, what was it like? Oh, he didn't, didn't have anything to say about that. Although we do see that uh, the Jews were trying to kill him again after, you know, he was raised because many people believed on Jesus uh, because he rose raised again. So, Yeah. So, it's an amazing story, and now we get to the very last part where we meet our last person, which is of note, verse number 43. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon, a tanner. Okay, this is significant, uh, not only because, you know, Simon is the name of Peter, you know, the, 
former name of Peter at least, um, but the fact that this guy was a tanner. So we see, okay, so the Jewish people would, they're kind of uh, iffy with certain occupations. Tanner uh, is a person that takes dead animals and skins them, okay? And so, according to my research about this, is that this was a occupation that was looked down on by the Jewish people of how could you touch dead things. And because you touch dead things, you couldn't go into the temple, you couldn't worship there in Jerusalem, and so that, there was a stigma there. And so, <laughs> so Peter is going to Simon's house and staying there many days with one that the Jewish people would say, I don't know about, about that relationship there. So it's kind of an interesting uh, dilemma that, uh, that we see in verse number 43. And then we're going to find him you know, and in, the, in the same place uh, in the next chapter. So let me stop right there and ask the question for us to think about. Uh, what lessons can we learn uh, from the text that we have uh, for tonight? Uh, what life lessons could we apply to our our lives yeah it's kind of the interesting thing that the thing that, that came to my mind along the same lines uh, of your thought is that you know this man was a walking miracle the fact that he can walk and this lady is a walking miracle the fact that she came back to life likewise we are those who are in christ we are walking miracles because what God has done in our lives to change us into the image of Christ, now true enough, we're not perfect yet. You know, we're not going to be on this side of eternity. But the more and more we get closer to God, the more He's changing us into Christ's image. And, and we could say, I am different than what I was before. And so, yeah, we're walking miracles, if you think about it that way. And so we can lead people to Christ by our own testimony, by our own way we live. And so that's a, that's a great point um, regarding these miracles. Okay. So she might... Yeah. So, so well, the... Okay, so she wouldn't know that she would come back to life right away. <laughs> you know, you know if, if she was like Mary and Martha, you know, Mar Martha said, well, I know, you know, my brother's going to raise again on the last day when everybody else raises up. Well, she probably, she closed her eyes uh, here on earth and woke up in an eternity, but yet then she came back. Oh, that was a quick trip. You know, <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's kind of an interesting thing. But yet we know all about the resurrection, the sure fact that there is one, there, there is a rapture, there is a resurrection for all of us to, uh, to live in, a, in the way we, sh we ought to. So yeah, true. Living in light of the resurrection. If Peter's in town, go visit him. <laughs> all right yes <laughs> all right yeah one thing that uh, is kind of an interesting thing as i'm studying this out that one we have a person that has a greek name we don't know if he actually is jewish um, but yet peter is helping him with being with a miraculous uh with a miracle and then we see specifically tabitha also called Dorcas, for whatever reason, she is known by her Greek name as well. And in fact, it reiterates that name. And by yet, she is raised again. And then we see him, uh, Peter, going to stay with Simon the Tanner. Already, you know, God is breaking down barriers uh, among the Peter and the Jewish people to accept what the next chapter, which is when the Gentiles will be received into the body of Christ. And so we have the Jews already. Now we have the Samaritans. The next step is the Gentiles, which we're all part of that group, I would say. So, yeah. So that's a, a wonderful thing that God, He, he breaks down barriers uh, that we have in, uh, in our classifications, in our, in our society, and makes us into one body, one group of people. Christians, and so we praise the Lord for that. So, any other thoughts uh, before we get to our prayer requests? All right, well, let's go ahead and get to our prayer requests tonight.